Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. Today's video features truly scary stories sent in from viewers like yourselves. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe now for future content. Sit back, relax, stay sinful. Story number one. The following story is true. I was in Mexico on vacation over the summer with my siblings. We stayed at my grandmother's house for the entirety of the stay. At this time I was simping over a girl at my school, and the previous school year was the worst year of my life. I got into a massive depression for the whole year because of my obsession over her. I decided to go on vacation to get my mind off of this girl. I received a friend request on Facebook from an older woman, who we'll call Laura. I accepted the request immediately. A few weeks passed and my birthday was coming up in July. On the day of my birthday they made my sister and me a birthday party, since our birthdays are only six days apart. As day became evening and evening became night, everybody left back to their homes. It was around 10 p.m. when we began messaging each other on Messenger. Previously, I had liked some of her photos and began to message her. She replied and everything was normal at first. This night the conversation began normal. That was until she began to turn the conversation sexual. She then video called me and told me to accept her incoming call. I had always never trusted anything having to do with webcams or recordings on social media up until this time. But being desperate for having something with a girl at this time, I gave in thinking maybe, just maybe I could have something with this woman. I accepted her call and she was there showing herself naked. She told me to turn the camera around on myself. I stupidly showed my face in the video upon her request and the call went on for about 5 minutes. She then sends me a link saying she screen recorded me during the whole call. She messaged me saying that I must always be available for her whenever she wanted to not unfriend her or else she would send the video to everyone I know. I immediately blocked her before she had a chance to do anything else and removed all of my personal information I had on my profile as well as most of the pictures I had uploaded until that time, including my profile picture and cover photo. I was scared out of my mind that night and I couldn't sleep until about 3am. So many thoughts were flooding my mind. What if she does send that video to my family and friends? What if she posts the video online? I won't even know. The most haunting thought I had was, what if she sends somebody to where I was to harm me? I was literally nervous the whole time until I fell asleep later that night. I started thinking that even if I had to wait 20 years to find somebody to be with, I would much rather wait to be safe and sound than do something like this ever again. After a couple of days, I unblocked Laura to see she still had her account. It disappeared from Facebook and I never dared check it again. I never trusted webcams before this. Now after this I trust webcams much less. I am so glad nothing happened and I'm still here alive, safe and sound, thankfully. To all of you hearing this story, I highly advise you, if you want to be with somebody, do it in real life. Never try to find somebody online who you don't know in real life. Also. Never ever video call somebody unless you know that person well enough and trust them and even then be extremely careful who you video call. Story number two. I have some stories that are more bizarre than scary, but they are bizarre enough to be creepy. They happened to my boyfriend who we will call Mike who worked as a security guard for 10 years. The first three stories are about strange animal behaviors and interactions. The last stories are about an incredibly creepy workplace and an alarm that went off at a station near Skinwalker Ranch. I obviously cannot say where he worked, but let's pretend it's a utility company with satellite stations all over the western region and remote places. His office was full of dozens of monitors. It was a CCTV station. Mike's job was to report and log all alarms that were triggered in a region that covered three states. Most of his day was spent figuring out why an alarm was triggered 
and it was tedious considering even the wind would trigger these alarms. Often the alarms were triggered by cats. If in the city and if it was a station miles away from any activity, then it was likely bunnies or deer. The first story actually took place at home when Mike was on his way to work. I still don't understand how or why this happened. It wasn't some scary cryptid. It was only a large dog. This is what was so unnerving. At 7 a.m. on his way to work, he encountered a dog sitting in the front driver's seat of our car. The door was slightly ajar and there were no other people around. Nevertheless, there was a large dog facing forward in the front seat of the steering wheel. Mike said, Dog, you have to go. The dog then reluctantly moved to the passenger's side and looked at Mike as if begging him to not make him leave. Mike obviously ushered the reluctant dog out of the car and rushed to work. We still ponder on this and have come to the conclusion there must have been someone who had a dog and was looking through unlocked cars. Then, when he got interrupted, he ran away and in the process left his dog behind. This is the only conclusion we are comfortable to accept. The second situation took place at work on camera. An alarm went off at a distant station far from human habitation. However, the alarm said it was a human that set it off. Mike studied all the videos for what triggered the alarm, and all he could see were deer. The alarm kept being triggered, so he continued to study each camera. He was taken aback on his final appraisal, as he saw in the infrared video a man, a man standing casually in the middle of a herd of deer. It makes no sense, but it was on camera. A man standing with the deer without an agitation to them. So was he the deer whisperer? I'm sure some might jump to the conclusion it might be something supernatural, but all the camera saw was a rudimentary man in the middle of a gathering of deer. Regardless, it is no doubt strange and unusual behavior. The final story I'll share with you about bizarre animal behavior also took place far from human habitation at a station in the mountains. Now, this story is so fantastical I actually asked if Mike could show me. I'm sure he broke the rules, but he brought home several stills from the video that he swiftly deleted after I saw them. It's hard not to anthropomorphize what happened because it seems so on the nose. First, an alarm was set off so he began an investigation into what caused the alarm. He found out it was a mouse. What riveted his attention about this mouse what is it was running back and forth in front of an owl. That's strange, he thought. So he continued to watch and the owl flew down and stood by the mouse. The mouse kept running back and forth in front of the owl. It's impossible to speculate why the mouse did that and why the owl didn't eat him. Soon after the owl flew down, a huge porcupine waddled up to the mouse and owl. Weird. Mike thought as he was caught by the unusual narrative. He was able to see all of this because the activity took place near one of the remote but heavily monitored stations, and alarms were repeatedly being triggered by this activity. He noted that they were at a crossroad as well. Soon after the porcupine arrived, a doe and her fawn joined the owl, mouse, and porcupine in a circle at the crossroad. They all stayed there in a circle for quite some time. The temptation to anthropomorphize their meeting is too tempting to not speculate. So it was a meeting. What were they meeting for? I saw the stills of the video and it looked exactly as he described how it happened. The last two creepy stories. Mike took security work on the side to patrol a medical supply factory. This is so deeply upsetting to me it seems I think about it more often than I'm comfortable with. First off, the building has strange and unconventional architecture, and I feel places like this are damned from the start. There are many creepy things about this place, but I am only going to tell you one of them, the one that stands out most to me. The first time Mike does his rounds, he comes across a wing of the factory that defies all that is rational and safe and mentally sound in this world. During his first and many subsequent rounds he made at this site, he came across a large room divided into cubicles. 
At first glance, there were many people still at work as he walks in to continue his patrol. However, he almost has a heart attack realizing all these people hard at work in their cubicles were mannequins and wigs, dressed in office attire, and had cubicles that had been personalized with photos and knickknacks. No one warned him. No one had an explanation. This madness took place in the same building where they were manufacturing medical equipment in a highly scientific, highly sterilized and very professional way. This room is so creepy and so out of place its very existence haunts me still. Its creep factor was heightened by a lack of explanation and the requirement that security patrol the room. Lastly, I told you Mike monitors CCTVs that cover a region that spans three states. Some of the stations are extremely far from civilization, and while I can't name the place, I can say one of the stations that is monitored is near Skinwalker Ranch. One evening he walked into work and his co-worker said, Watch this. Now Mike had been doing this work for years by then, so watching video forwards and backwards became second nature. The video showed an infrared alarm being triggered by an elongated shadow of a man walking, but no man to accompany the shadow. Yes, this is creepy, but his co-worker said, Do you get it? Do you get why it's so creepy? His co-worker played the video again, and Mike realized it was a gate of the walk and the timeline that made the video creepy. When the video played forward as it was recorded, it showed a person awkwardly walking because he was walking backwards in the real lifetime capture of the video. The gait or manner of walking only looks normal when you play the video backwards. It is so creepy that it calls into question paranormal activity and time conventions. I personally didn't even consider time conventions when thinking about paranormal activity. I hope you guys enjoyed these true scary stories. Thank you for watching and listening. If you're new to the channel, again, please subscribe now for future content. Email all of your true scary stories to thesinfulsavant at gmail.com to have the chance to be featured on an upcoming video. Till we meet again, my friends, stay sinful.